In my previous video, I showed you this Hobbies fretwork machine, all in pieces on the bench. I've now reassembled it all, I've cleaned it all up, and I've put it all back together again now. There's just one thing that remains to be done, apart from the testing that is, and that's fitting the belt on. Now, the thing is, the, uh, the belt has broken. It's only held together with a small piece of wire, but fortunately, about 40 years ago, I bought a spare belt for it, just on the off chance, because I thought it might go one day. So I've got a, a brand new one here, complete with the wire fitting. If you've got one of these machines, I doubt there's many about now, if you're stuck for one of these belts, you can still buy them, because they're used on actual treadle sewing machines. And that I've noticed they are for sale on eBay, quite reasonably priced anyway, so it's not a problem. The only thing I've got to do is make a hole in either end of the belt to put this little wire fitting in. So what I'm going to do, rather than damage it, I'm just going to use this little drill and I'm going to drill a hole in the end of the belt with this rather than try punching it through because I don't want to bust the thing because it is cut to the right length. So this is actually the right belt for the machine. Right, that's that one done. Just made a tiny hole in there. And then uh, that piece of wire simply fits in like, need a pair of pliers on it probably. Just force that through, it's probably better if it's a bit tight. Then I've got to make a, a similar hole on the other side of the belt. It roughly the right distance. It didn't stop jumping about, it's a, just over a quarter of an inch away so. I'm just guessing this but I can always trim it I suppose. About there I should think, right. There we go, I've got a hole in both sides. Now it's simply a matter of wrapping the belt around the wheel and round to the little pulley in here and putting the fitting in and that should be the job done hopefully. And then I can test it out. Well I've now got the belt on and to be honest I'm quite glad I turned the camera off when I put it on because it was a hell of a job to do. It's ages, many many years since I put one of these on and I did find it quite a fiddly thing to do. I didn't want to cut it too short, I wasn't sure how, how tight to have it. You don't need to be too tight. Uh, on the other hand, you don't want it loose or else it will spin on the pulley here. And then you've got the problem with this bit of wire that holds it together. So I just kept cutting little bits off at a time, but it, it was a fiddle to do. And there's not much clearance there. It is functional. It's a bit fiddly trying to do it up on the workbench. But you can see it is actually working. It's a long time since I've used it. I forgot how to use it now. Now before I show you the fretwork machine working, I'm going to show you what we used to do before we had a fretwork machine. In fact, when I was a, a young lad, my dad would use a fretwork machine and I'd use one of these. This is a Hobbies hand frame. Um, these machines have been made since about the year 1900. And I've got three of them in different sizes. They're not easy to use particularly, but I'm just going to show you. This is the way I used to do it. I've just got a bit of plywood here. You need a table. This is a homemade one because they're better than the bought metal ones. And all you do, you just get your piece of wood and hold it down firmly on the table and cut away. That's quite nicely actually. I used to do all my fret work this way. But I don't think I fancy doing it now. It's a lot harder than I used to find it. There you go. Cut a straight line. I'll just show you a little bit how it works. Brings back a few memories, this does. Actually, it's quite a nice sound, that. Cuts quite nicely. And that's got a, a quick release blade clamp as well. And these hand saws, actually, are quite good because this particular one is unique. It's got a knob on the bottom which you can turn which will adjust this length here. And the idea was in the days when when um, people hadn't got much money, if you snapped the blade off, say it snapped down there, you could actually turn this and height, move this piece out and put a broken blade in and use a broken blade, providing it wasn't broken in the middle obviously. So you could make use of a blade that snapped off at the bottom. And, and again with that clamp there, quick release clamp, made it quite nice to use. So that's the way I used to do it. And now I'm going to show you the treadle machine working. Okay folks, so I've got the treadle machine working now. And if you see a big black creature in the way, it's my dog Paddy. And he keeps getting in the way. He's down here, sat right by my side. And he's going to knock the camera over if I'm not careful. 
I'm now going to show. I'm, I'm now operating the treadle machine. You've got to sit down to do this, mine. If you've used a sew, treadle sewing machine, you could use one of these. It seems to be working quite smoothly. I'm a bit worried the dog's going to knock my camera over. Anyway, let's get a bit of wood and we'll show you it working. All you do, you've got to hold the wood down firmly because otherwise it'll clatter up and down on the table. You turn this little wheel on the side because if the if the wheel's in a certain position you can't start the treadle movement so you've got to give that a twirl just to get it going sometimes. Get the saw going. Right folks, I'm now going to start a bit of cutting. Actually I think it was easier, easier using the hand tool. Although you've got both hands free this way. I'll tell you what, you'll have to make your legs ache. I'm not fancy doing this much. Oh dear. I'm not used to this, folks. I haven't done this for many, many years. The cuts, though, nothing wrong with it. Oh dear. That was quite hard work, actually. <laughs> I don't fancy doing too much of that. I found that pretty hard to do. Well, it makes my legs ache. Probably good exercise, actually. But you can see it does work all right. And over the years, many thousands of people were sat in their homes using one of these things, making toys and various things, mottos and calendars and pipe racks were a speciality that hobbies made. And my grandfather actually cut a, a plaque of the Lord's Prayer with all this intricate lettering. It's the most complex piece of fretwork I've ever seen. I could never do it. He used to have it on his, hanging on his wall and he cut it on one of these and it was a miraculous piece of work. I think that'll do for now. That's basically showing you the fret machine working. I hope you found it interesting. In an age of smartphones and tablets and computers, people aren't really interested in fret work. Which is a shame, I think. Because it's quite a nice little hobby. Relaxing. And you can do it in your house. You don't have to have a workshop to do it in. Now, this, folks, is the ultimate. You've seen the hand frame, you've seen the treadle saw, and this is the Hegner fret saw, motorised obviously, it's got an induction motor. I won't go into too much detail of the saw at this stage, because I have done another video on this saw, but I'm just going to show you how much easier it is compared to the old treadle machine. But I'm going to switch it on, and you can see how easy it is to use. It's a, a lovely quiet machine, it's got variable speed, you go really slow, if, you, if you're a beginner you can just chug along like using a hand frame like this. So. You have to watch because the, the, the work will tend to jump like that so you must keep it down firmly. I just, if, you, you know, if you're a bit nervous about it when you first start, it's handy to have variable speed because you can just take it easy like that. It gives you more time to think. Now I'll turn it up a bit. That's better and faster. You can see how much easier it is than using the old treadle machine. So you can see it, it, this is the latest progression. These are wonderful, these machines. They are quite expensive. There are lots of different scroll saws you can buy. Anyway, that's the Hegner fret saw, folks. I just wanted to show the difference between the old treadle saw, poor old treadle machine over there, which at least I've given it a new lease of life, and the modern counterpart, the Hegner. Here's a few samples of a few things I've made on this particular saw, on the Hegner saw. That's a little Christmas decoration. There's another one here, which is similar, but I've got a, a, a dark wood backing on that one. Some deer. It's quite intricate that, it takes a bit of practice to do that sort of thing. These little tiny pieces here are very difficult to cut out. There's a witch. That's the front of a letter rack I was making. Lettering is the most difficult thing to cut out on a fret saw, I believe. If you're doing patterns like, um, for example, these flowers, and you make a mistake, you can get round it and nobody notices, but when you're doing lettering, it has to be perfect. If you make a mistake with lettering, it's noticeable straight away. There's uh, some geese flying. There's a couple more witches. There's some wolves. 
some trees in the background, the moon. That's quite a lot of work on that. It takes quite a while to do those. What I do, I stack cut them. I cut three at a time, at least three, sometimes four. There's a German Shepherd charity that we belong to and I made quite a lot of these and they've sold them on their store. Just brings them a few extra funds. So that's a few of the things I've made on the saw. I'll just show you a few fretwork pieces that I've made fairly recently. This is a bird bracket that I made. It's quite involved. It, it did take quite a while to cut out because there are quite a lot of um, internal cuts on it. This is a cycling bracket I made. This is made from a design that was published by Hobbies in 1911. This is a Hobbies Gamekeeper bracket. This design was about for many, many years. I actually made one of these when I was a little boy. This owl design is one of my favourites too. This is one more for Christmas time. Another Christmas design. Covered in dust by the way, like all fretwork. This is the naughty dog that interrupted my filming. His name's Paddy. He always likes to be with you when you're working, but he usually gets in the way. Mm -hmm.